Hey guys, I am Trent for Trent Sense, and I am here to share with you guys an unboxing of the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10. Uh, a lot of you probably didn't expect me to review this device, considering my track record of Sony Ericsson devices in the past. Now this time around, I am very excited to have this review unit from Expansus USA because it will give me a chance to uh, not only be reunited with Sony Ericsson, but to also see the ways in which it has improved, if at all, with a brand new operating system such as Android. I am now going to unbox the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10. All right, here we have the packaging for the Xperia X10 made by Sony Ericsson. At the bottom of the box, you have the brand name along with the new motto, Make Dot Believe. And then at the top of it, you have the Sony Ericsson logo in blue. And then at the back of the box, you have the Android logo, Wi-Fi, QuickTime, and some fine print and some other you know, icons uh, all about the uh, features that are included in this device. Now, while the box has a basic matte feel to it, you will notice that the device itself has a glossy finish to it. You can see the uh, glare from the desk light there. Okay, you will notice that the top of the box slides off just like on the Google Nexus One and the Apple iPhone packaging. And we, of course, have the device here. And from what I can see, it looks like someone had already reviewed this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the plastic. Okay, it feels like a pretty good size and I'm very eager to tap into what this has to offer. But uh, before I get into a tour of the physical body of this X10, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what else is in the box. we have the headset for the X10. But what makes this headset particularly special is that it comes in two different pieces. The first piece is of course the earbuds that go with the X10. And these earbuds are of the same variant that come along with the Nokia E72 and the Google Nexus One. Now the second piece of the headset for the X10 includes the 3.5 millimeter headset jack along with a clothing clip so and, th and then you also have a built-in microphone with a tactile call button now what makes this call button microphone combination so interesting is that it also includes a 3.5 millimeter port at the very top which makes this compatible with any kind of 3.5 millimeter headphone that you happen to have in your possession you will see that the X10 is a smidge taller than the Nexus One and if I'm not mistaken it is also a bit wider as well now this is no surprise being that the X10 has a 4 inch touchscreen in comparison to the Google uh, 3.7 inch screen. Um, you do have a metallic finish from a chrome-like ring that goes around the entire perimeter of the device. But other than that, uh, you really have to deal with a ton of plastic on the finish of the X10. At the front of the device, you of course have the four inch capacitive touch screen that does not feature multi-touch unfortunately. Just above the 4-inch touchscreen, you of course have the earpiece. And to the left of the earpiece is an ambient light sensor inside the bezel, which probably can't be seen. To the right of the earpiece, you should be able to see a dark circle. That dark circle happens to be the proximity sensor. And to the right of the proximity sensor, you should have an LED notification light inside the bezel. Now just below the touch screen and the Xperia brand name, you have three tactile buttons for menu, home, and back. At the bottom of the X10, you only have an eyelet to be able to hook a wristband of some kind to the device. 
If you take a close look just above the eyelet, you will see a black space there. That happens to be a notch in which you would dig your fingernail to pry open the battery door. On the right side of the X10, you have two sets of tactile buttons. You have a camera shutter button as well as a rocker key to control either volume or zooming controls. At the top of the X10, you have your power button, your 3.5 millimeter jack, and a micro USB port that has a plastic flap cover over it. The left side of the X10 only features two notches. The larger notch toward the top is the speaker and the smaller notch toward the bottom is the microphone. Now the back features some name branding along with the logo and then you have a lens for an 8.1 megapixel camera which is accompanied by an LED flash. Now once the battery door is removed, you will have the battery bay that holds the battery as well as two slots, one for the micro SD card and the other one for your SIM card. Now you will see here that there is already a micro SD card installed on the phone and I see that it is an 8 gigabyte variant on the X10. Years ago in the past, I've only used three different Sony Ericsson devices. These were the W810i model that I used on Singular, and the, uh, the P990, which was a huge disaster, and the P1i, which was a little bit of a step up from the P990, but not that great. Um, after using those three devices, I came to the conclusion that Sony Ericsson just really was not the brand for me, and I ended up moving on to something else. Now, aside from the potential cons that I am due to run into with the interfacing and the version of Android OS that runs on it, I am very excited to have a capacitive screen that is much bigger than that of my Google Nexus One and the Nokia N900 that I used to have. I've read bad reviews online about a number of features for the X10 regarding its interfacing, its call quality, and its speaker volume, but I'm not going to let that cloud my judgment for right now. I think it'll be best for me to just go ahead, take the battery, pop it into the device, and use it for myself to see what I can gain from this particular device. Um, now, I have to admit that the X10 could be interesting in its own right, being that it's got a very large 4-inch capacitive touchscreen along with a brand new interface created by Sony Ericsson that is laid over the Android operating system. I am going to take the time out to use the X10 to see exactly what I can get from the Android operating system that runs on this device. Um, one more aspect of this device that really interests me happens to be the fact that it is compatible with the T-Mobile 3G network. So um, I am aware of the fact that it cannot run multi-touch at this time and that it is not at the most current version of the Android operating system. However, I am willing to go into this with an open mind and um, really give it a shot. So with all of that being said, I will use this device for the next coming weeks and I will be sure to come back with you guys with the lowdown as to what I think of it, good and bad. So with all of that being said, in the meantime, all of you guys take care and stay safe.